You know it's gonna be a good day when the 210 comes out. It's about to get even better. Got some canes, but that's not why today's good. 210s are coming out to play. You just can't beat that view. We got another one over there. But these are cool ones. This is a view I could get used to. Well, that wasn't as cold of a start as I wanted it to be, but it still sounds pretty good. There's definitely over 12 hours since it was started. That was not like a true cold start for this car. These cold starts can be pretty loud. Everyone likes a carbon fiber splitter on the Brabus, but one thing people don't realize is just how low it is to the ground. That's my fist, so there's really not much clearance at all. This is lower than both my 124 and my 210, even when my 210 was slammed. So this means taking everything at an angle, going sideways over driveways and dips and all that type of stuff. So for example, to exit my driveway at my house, I go all the way to the left, as far as I can go, and then turn a massive angle, try to go as parallel to curb as possible without jumping over, and then slowly get over it. was clear from that video but that spoiler barely cleared that driveway being as low as this car is it actually rides surprisingly softer than the e60 it's a much more compliant suspension which i really like it does still handle really good but of course the e60 is just a little bit tighter and then turns i get a lot of people ask me questions where you can get that splitter and the answer is you just cannot get it they haven't made it in almost 20 plus years in order to run that splitter you're gonna have to run the brabus lower chin spoiler which this car of course has so if you don't have that it's not going to work on your car and you're probably not gonna be able to find either one you probably find the replica ones of the lower chin spoiler, but you will definitely not find that splitter, especially in carbon fiber. And another thing I want to point out too is that not many people are prepared for the low life as it's called. When the car is low, it's like you're going to have to think about everywhere you go, every driveway, every dip, every bump. You're going to have to plan that out ahead. Otherwise, you're not going to have a good time. That being said, of course, the car does look a lot better lower, especially with the body kit and splitter. But yeah, that's going to affect the way you drive the car for sure. And the best part about this car is, of course, the power. But as you probably know, with all that power and all this traffic, we can't really use it. Which is why I really like this car. It's still very comfortable. And of course, it still looks amazing. So it's a very pleasant experience to be in. We got a little tunnel coming up right here. Turned off the AC for maximum power. That never gets old. This car is just so effortless to drive. First stop of the day. Nope. Well, the first stop didn't go as planned, so instead of her driving by the beach for a little bit. That's probably the best thing about this car is that it can be calm and just under the radar, but uh, you totally can easily get in trouble with it as well. But that's crazy. It kept up with that car pretty well. Of course, he pulled away as soon as he you know, gave it all the beans, but you know, for a 25-year-old car, not bad. I'll look this up later or maybe someone can comment, but I think horsepower figures are almost identical. The Brabus should be around 450 and uh, 450 pound-feet of torque. 
I think the GT is almost at the same level. But I think that's just a standard GTS. He probably has a tune on it. Full resto mod 16 valve has arrived. That's painted astral silver. Really nice. Machine cut Evo 2s. Desperate need of LEDs. Zinio Silver E55 has got the center cast back on. So these are actually the original ones, these are not new. And they look really, really good. They're gonna be slightly more faded in the face, but it is a really good match in person in daytime. So the wheels are finally complete. I think it turned out really good. The paint's had some time to harden, and the finish looks really, really good in person. It's really helped improve the overall aesthetic of the car. This car just got a head gasket. First start. Lift her tick and went away. There's some slight smoke coming out from the engine bench as the header paint baking in. Right there, you can kind of see it. This is fresh paint on the headers. New hardware, looks really good. Proper LEDs. One week later. All right, part two, let's hope this goes better. I've been doing a pretty bad job at filming this car recently. We're out driving it, had it inspected, passed of course. Drove around a little bit, of course, just having a good time as you saw. Sorry about the noise, it's a really busy day over here. Car is filthy. I already wiped it down once. So this has like a little over 100 miles on it. It's already starting to show some dirt. I wiped down the front, so the front's pretty clean. But yeah, no wheels, this side's dirty. All right, just finished wiping her down. That's how dirty the towel is. This is mostly from the wheels. And then I think I used both sides. The paint was not actually that bad. It was mainly the wheels. Tires need dressing. They're really dry and dirty. But uh, it's crazy how big of a difference wiping down the wheels makes on the front, especially. The lip just becomes so much brighter. That looks way better than before. Probably doesn't pick up on camera, but it was really dirty. I also kind of got the brake caliper a little bit, so a little bit brighter. This car is really nice. It's kind of crazy how I got all this like driving experience with a bunch of different 210s. So I know a lot of people are asking. I'm going to give you some of my thoughts on the Brabus E65. So let's start off with the brakes. So the brakes look pretty incredible. They're the Alcon 4 piston with the pretty cool rotors. For street driving, they don't actually feel that great in my opinion. 
driving this around town. These brakes take a little time to warm up, but once they're warm, they're of course great, but it's just, you can actually hear how much they're biting the rotor. They're not super loud, but they're a little noisy compared to other brakes, but you can really hear how much they're biting the rotor. And I know that the first set of rotors that this car had with a uh, sub 40,000 miles, this car's almost at 60 now, these are new rotors. They were uh, severely lipped, which means they were under minimum, way under minimum from what I heard. So the combination of the pads and rotors are very aggressive, which is great for high performance driving, which is the design of this car they try to go 200 miles an hour these would be the brakes you want to have to stop from 200 but just driving it around town i personally like my akibono brake pads on my e55 brakes with the oem rotors way better than this just for around town driving however these do look extremely cool they are four piston versus the e55 too they are fixed versus floating the suspension is of course brabus branded uh springs and shocks however they are blue springs with yellow shocks these shocks have Bilstein branding, so I think these are just Bilstein B8s. They might be custom valving for Brabus. Uh, the springs are branded Brabus, but I believe H&R manufactures them. Could be custom spring rates for Brabus. Car sits really low. It's on number three pads on the front and back, I think. Pretty much no gap. The rear is just as low. It's pretty much right at the top of the tire. I think from this angle, the front looks a little lower. Of course, the pavement can be uneven. I think this car sits a little bit too high in the rear or too low in the front. I'll probably raise the front up. I'll go to number five pad in the front to kind of even it out. I think from the frame, this is almost raked. Pretty hard to tell. This car does sit nice, and of course, while driving, it looks great. For me, there is something to be desired about the ride height, especially since on the front, with that lip, we got very little ground clearance. For me, raising the front would be my personal preference. I think that would be the way to go on this car. Of course, this is just how the car came from Brabus. Leaving it as is makes perfect sense. These wheels are the Brabus Monoblock 4 three-piece edition. The name Monoblock normally wouldn't correspond with a multi-piece wheel. That is just Brabus' nomenclature. When I first saw these wheels, they were next to the AMG R129 two-piece wheels made by BBS. They're both 18s. These are, um, I believe, 18 by eight front, 18 by nine rear. I could be wrong. The two-piece AMG BBS I'm talking about are eight and a half front, 10 rear, so they're really wide, super aggressive offset. This is a lot less aggressive, which is actually good because this car does not rub at all, despite being how low it is. The way that the wheels sit actually reminds me a lot about the monoblocks on the W210 E55. On a car this low, they do fit just like this on my car. My car is a bit higher than this, of course. These wheels have actually grown on me quite a bit. I initially didn't really like them. Getting to see them up close, see all the little details, this is actually a really interesting wheel. It's three-piece design, so got the lip, the barrel, and the face with titanium hardware, which is really, really cool. I love the black centers. So this is a ceramic coating, like what you do to an exhaust. This is not powder, I believe. Really nice touch, and I like the matte finish. I think it goes great with this car. It just fits the style so well. If this car had silver wheels, I would definitely hate that for sure. But the black on black on black theme is just perfect. With the Mission Pilot Sport 4S, this car drives extremely well. These wheels were built correctly, of course. No bends, no cracks, balances out great. And these tires, transform the ride of any car. I would highly recommend you check out 4S's if you haven't. As you heard in the previous clip, this car sounds amazing. I believe it's the stock headers to the Brabus Cats, Brabus Resonator, Brabus Muffler. So it has a full exhaust, which is kind of surprising hearing how loud the idle is. You know, outside my friend that recorded that video said it's actually kind of underwhelming because you expect it to be so much louder with the idle, but this is a really refined sound. It's not super annoying. It's still loud enough to be enjoyable. And I think if you're tame with it, you're not gonna get in trouble. In fact, uh, there was one time where I kind of floored it. I didn't see a cop and he didn't even notice, which is great. But still, this exhaust turns heads. The average person will snap their neck when they hear this car. And this car actually does get quite a bit of looks. I had a couple people give me thumbs up saying, oh, that's such a cool car. So yeah, I think the sound and the looks are on, on this car are pretty top notch. Speaking of, uh, let's talk about the body kit. So the Brabus body kit is based on the factory bumpers, not the AMG. So it adds a little lip spoiler in the back with the cutout. The exhaust is the slanted tips. So really interesting. This exhaust, because it is black, is like so under the radar, which I like. It fades away in the bumper. It's still there. It's very subtle, which I like so much about this car is just being about subtle and that totally fits the theme. These side skirts look pretty cool. They're really just body color with no cuts or anything. This really reminds me of the facelift side skirts on the 210, the non-AMG ones, just completely smoothed out. And of course, no room for the rubber gaskets. So really, really cool. The front bumper is based on the stock one with the Brabus spoiler. I'm not talking about the splitter, the little part that goes right there all along the edge. So this just actually extends it just ever so slightly. It's really subtle, but then you have the carbon fiber lip, which was only supposed to be on the V12 cars. This was an accessory that was available to purchase at one point, and I'm glad this car has it because it really ties in the whole look. This is actually not stock. It is full carbon fiber. This is real carbon fiber. 
but this was painted to just have these exposed windows and we'll see air does pass through there. Really nice touch. Color match grill, really nice. And the flat emblem. This has no Mercedes branding on the outside. It's all Brabus. So we got the Brabus logo there, the Brabus logo in the back, Brabus center caps. Probably hard to see. We got the Brabus emblems where the mod designation would be. Brabus logo in the center and the model on the right, E65. And this actually confuses a lot of people. They think 65 refers to the twin turbo V12 that Mercedes made. That is not the case. This refers to the displacement. This is back when the numbers actually meant something on the back. 6.5 liters, it is rounded up from 6.4. I don't know the exact uh, specifications, but it's around 6.4. So this is the six and a half liter M119. Brabus, of course, redid the heads, the valving, the cams, the tuning. So this car really drives incredible. That's one thing about this car versus the E60. This car is a lot less refined. The E60 is so much more refined. So this car has a pretty lumpy idle compared to the E60. This car just drives like a bit more wild than you would expect it to. And that is something I actually really like. It's more of my style than the E60. The E60, you could just tell it's a factory car. It is just so refined. It's a car you'd expect to buy from the dealer. This is all tuner, of course. And speaking of being all tuner, let's not forget the interior. The Brabus Mastic Leather. This is of course based on the factory uh, seat pattern. This is not the AMG style seats, which is still really nice. I feel like they did add something to the bolsters. The bolsters feel a little bit more extra than the factory seats would have had. Really, really nice touch. The leather is incredibly soft being the mastic leather and that extends to the door panel inserts right there. And this one actually has a couple extra pieces there with the door handle. Of course, the rear seats match. We got a little Michelin man right there. Alcantara headliner. There's just so much stuff about this car that I would do to my own car personally, and I have, like the Alcantara. This car really fits my taste, and I really like driving this car. It is one of the best experiences in the world. We have a Brabus branded steering wheel. I believe Victor actually manufactures these. Victor was a big manufacturer of these Mercedes wheels back in the day. This wheel is so pleasant to hold on to. It's got the bolstering up here where the AMG would have it, and on the sides with the perforated leather. Brabus branding, of course. The Mastic Leather on the shifter, Brabus branded door sills. This car is such a pleasure to be in. So speaking more on the driving experience, of course, the power figures are incredible. They're, I believe, around 450-ish, probably plus or minus a couple there, horsepower and torque. And this car feels extremely fast. That is about the power figures of a compressor W211 E55. So the only real frame of reference I have to speed is basically that AMG GT I kind of had a little roll with. It kind of kept up being a 25-year-old car, and that car was tuned. Of course, it pulled away, but this was actually a lot faster than you think it would be. Of course, this car by modern standards is really not that fast. I think a mid-range Tesla would probably beat it off the line. This car is all about going top speed, which of course the acceleration is good. But if you look at that Motortron article, the quarter mile time and the zero to 60 is actually kind of disappointing, which I feel like back then the tire technology just wasn't there. This car probably had a really hard time pulling down the power. We could probably improve it with the four S's on here, but who really knows? It is a fast 210 and it is just a really well driving car. It checks off all the right boxes for me. I'm kind of touching more on the suspension. This car actually did not come with any sway bar upgrades this is the stock e420 sway bars so this was upgraded later on to the w210 amg sway bars which is the thickest ones you can get stock i believe hnr is a little bit thicker but this just has the w210 amg sway bars front and back and if you never felt a car with stock sway bars versus the upgraded ones it actually does make a really big difference on the 210 i did the same thing on mine my e430 put the amg sway bars in and you know it's a pretty much immediate difference the body roll is reduced without sacrificing any of the comfort of the ride so those are some of my thoughts on the brabus e65 i really Really love this car the driving experience of course i'm going to just say it's a 10 out of 10. i will be a little biased there i love the 210. i joke around on my instagram all the time saying this is the best car ever made past present and future but just driving this car for as long as i have for like the last almost nine years i probably have a, a more of a emotional attachment to it than anything but it's like that quote in ford versus ferrari everything begins to fade the machine becomes weightless just disappears and all that's left is a body moving through space and time and that's just kind of how i feel driving this car it's just you know, it's like you become one with the car. You really just integrate it with it. I know it's kind of like a weird quote to relate to. Uh, that's just how strongly I feel about the W210. And particularly this car being one of the most unique W210s. I know for me, I just cannot get enough of this car.